Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to be speaking to you here in beautiful, beautiful Cannes. Maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to your film The Water or Al Agua. Um, what can people expect if they watch it? Hello, very, very pleased to meet you too. Um, what people expect maybe is something uh, not that usual because it's a mix from uh, uh, documentary, naturalistic, a regard from my, from my hometown. Uh, in the south of Spain uh, and it takes place in a summer just a few weeks uh, before a big storm that uh, are announced and uh, there are some legends that are coming up from the from the past that there's that the that the river overflows because he uh, fall in love with a woman so we have a young lady like uh, wondering if she's not the next one to to be uh, to be the the uh, reverse bride <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, yeah it's, it's, it's a mix between this this legendary storytelling and the uh, the documentary everyday life of a summer during a summer in in, in the south of Spain so it's a little it's a, it's a maybe surprising mix of uh, genders that are not supposed to be together as fantastic and documentary. <laughs> And what was the inspiration behind this story yeah. and, and why did you want to make this for your, for your next feature? Yeah, my inspiration is my, my own life. <laughs> uh, I mean, as, as a, a lot of first, uh, first feature filmmaker, like uh, we are inspiring of what we, we really know. And, and I, I also did my three uh, previous short film in my, in my town and also uh, also trying to build this dialogue between the documentary and the, and the mystical part because I'm very interested in, in those, this fantastic, phantasmagorical uh, storytelling that we were raised with uh, uh, in those areas. And, um, um, and uh, from the main inspiration for me was my grandma and the way she, uh, the way she grew up me with all these stories, like mixing the, the, the uh, phantom stories and the, the, some uh, dead, um, dead from the family speaking like uh, next, next to us everyday life and, and, and at the same time trying to cook something for dinner and at the same time talking about the, about the weather and at the same time like, uh, like uh, having a, a real connection with the everyday life. So, so for me it's super hard to have a boundary uh, between what is real and what is fantastic because I was raised like this especially by women that really need to to really need this magical dimension to escape from the very very hard everyday life and tell us more about this kind of mix like you were mentioning um, between kind of documentary and fiction work and how does that create something unique do you think in your film mm. well I don't know if it's, if it's unique <laughs> I don't know if we achieved the the, uh, the challenge, but we tried to. Um, well, it was something really very innocent the way we, we put the, all this together. And, and I didn't, I never made a film school, and I and I I don't know, I've never been in so many uh, shootings. So we and, and the people that made the film either for the most part were non-professional actors and uh, first time for a lot of members of the crew, first time in life doing movies. So we, I think we just invent the way we, we dream about doing films and in, like in a, in a band. Uh, for me, the collective dimension of making a movie is very important. So I, uh, in all the parts, I, I was always with someone like uh, writing, I co I co write with someone and during the shooting we were doing this really in a collective way uh, for the preparation with the actors we were like uh, like uh, also having a lot of dialogue between the characters from fiction and from real and mixing for me this this, this collective part is super important so in when the time uh, being of, of taking the decision on where's the commentary and where's the where's the fiction part we were just like doing like because we feel like <laughs> so I, I I don't know if I have a clear answer of why we did like this but we just feel that that uh, they should be together and so we did <laughs> and, and how do you think the look and feel of your film kind of accentuates the story you know like that feeling of the the languid summer um, and the heat um, mm. and, and how did you want to capture that mm. Yeah, I think the weather is something that is very important in, in this area because on one hand we have this 
one of the main industry, economical um, aspects uh, and industry is the, uh, uh, how do you say in English, Ar agricultura, like the, the agriculture. agriculture, like the lemons and the oranges. Uh, this is one of the, of the main exporting points of, of, the, of Europe. I mean, it's, it's the, 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 the agriculture is super important, so the agriculture is always related to weather and uh, to water too, because it's a very, it's a very dry region and, and, the, and we really need water to irrigate the, 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 <coughs> the fields. But at the same time, we are afraid of this water because when it rains, it not rain uh, uh, like uh, very often, but when it's rain, it's like in the field, like it's rain a lot, and, and you get the overflow of the river. So we have very this very particular relationship with weather, with with natural elements, and um, and for me, when when we when we were preparing the film, was the one of the most important. It's like a character. Weather is a character itself because it's 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 fascinating. Um, the way people live, the way people love, the way people eat, and the way, I mean, weather is everything for us. Can you also talk a little bit about um, this theme of like mythologies and, and how they're kind of passed on through generations and how that kind of, you know, affects communities and societies? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in a sentimental way, for me, it was also very important because this is very autobiographical, is the complexity of 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 uh, legacy between a family in, in, into a family like inside when when especially in the in this uh, women legacy when you when you pass from a generation to the other um, for me it was very frightening in a certain way and, and very passionating also the relationship I have with my mom and with my grandma and I think this is something between women kind of special because at in, in one point and this is something I understood when I grew up. When I, now I'm 40 and I can understand a lot of things that I didn't understand when I was 15 uh, from my mom who I hated from during, during years and I didn't, I didn't want to be like her like uh, at any point but then I, I start to understand why she she told me because I didn't want to be like her because she was frightening me all the time like don't do that because uh, you are going to get lost don't don't get out at night because you are going to be, get raped and don't do I mean you, all these you know things that moms usually told and it was rebel I was like like I didn't want to to become that but at the same time when you because I, I feel it was super machist. And uh, at the same time, when I grew up, I mean, like, okay, it was machism because, and this is the complex part that are women that sometimes are, you know, frightening mm -hmm. us, and this is an, a machist attitude. But at the same time, I try to understand that she maybe didn't have any weapon to to do it in another way, and this is the perverse part of the machism mm -hmm. when we reproduce something. And at the same time, I was I I, I want also to understand this complexity uh, with the film and also understand that sometimes we are fragile as women and we are mm -hmm. fragile also as, as educators. Mm -hmm. Also the, the father in the film is, has fr this fragility that is not that easy and, and, and I want to put all the love but all the violence that are also related to this love between mothers and, fa uh, mothers and daughters and fathers and, 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 and sons. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's achieved, but we, I try not to be in a black and white situation, but more nuanced. And um, how do you think the topic of fate is explored in your film? And in particular, the sort of the feeling for women sometimes, the society wants to put them down a certain path, mm -hmm. and it can be hard to break out of those mm -hmm. shackles. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, certainly for the main character trying to, to break free of, 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 you know, a set destiny, let's say. Um, so what do you want to say about that mm, in the film? Yeah. Uh, well, I have not the answer, but the film is the, the, the whole question, why society always invent <laughs> and construct uh, all these kind of fates are popular beliefs in every culture and every time they are, they are, they are falling on women's bodies. <laughs> Specifically, like don't do that because you are going to again. You are. I mean, if you if you if you see like the uh, the the storytelling for child, they are always like don't do that, don't do this because and or, or a lot of them 
pass through women bodies, women, women desires, women, women capacities of doing things. So the theme, I, it's, I have not the answer, but the theme is the question. So are we, okay, are we able to, to deconstruct the faith or not? <laughs> or is so, I, I, hope, I hope we can, <laughs> I hope we can. I mean, obviously the, 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 the film goes in, the, in, in this direction, but, but for me it's more a, a question for all of us that, are, that an answer are a question also uh, for each person to, to, to try to understand what, why we are reproducing the same fates. And, 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 and it's not that easy to, to deconstruct this, but, but for me the, the, the point is that this young generation uh, could maybe rewrite the story, not escape from it because it's kind of hard and maybe they don't want to, to refuse their own traditional their own history and this is something very important for me. They, I think they are not in the film, the, the young people are not like refusing the history or the tradition they came from, but maybe right, trying to rewriting and trying to also dialogue with the previous uh, generation just to say, okay, maybe we can do differently. <laughs> maybe there's something and, and we, we assume our tradition, we assume our history, but maybe we can like, use it differently. Yeah. And this is, I hope we can do it. I hope at least we can, we can ask the question, um, why always everything falls into the <laughs> women's bodies? <laughs> And would you say that you consider, I mean, I think this is something that's relevant the world over, but there's also perhaps the, in each country that clash between the new generation and tradition um, is very specific. And in Spain, um, it feels like in contemporary times, things have got even more, it's not about linear progress sometimes. It can mm. feel like things are very divisive in mm -hmm. the rise of like uh, Vox is it and then a very, very strong women's mm -hmm. right movement. Mm -hmm. um, but rather than that causing progress, it feels like it's pulling mm. things apart. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the situation in Spain is also quite specific mm. on these issues? Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if I have the perspective to, to, to answer so because I don't know that well the other cultures <laughs> and the other <laughs> countries, but I feel like there's something I guess there's something going on in Europe at least, in Europe at least, because uh, we have this uh, this raising of the extreme right wings everywhere, um, unfortunately everywhere in Europe. We have the same in France, we have the same in uh, Poland, we have the same in uh, like a very reactionary, uh, like coming back uh, for ages or of, on women rights or homosexual rights, I mean like come on <laughs> mm -hmm. 2022 but at the same time we have this this um, this progression and this uh, passionate uh, uh, raising of feminism and, and other 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 um, other rights uh, struggle going on so um, I think we are in a very delicate moment of, of, of uh, extremism and uh, maybe we should be careful about the, about the about the um, how we ask questions. I, I think it's hard to give answers, but maybe how to ask questions, especially for the young generation, because I realized during the film, uh, most of them, all of them, are non-professional. Um, I, I found them when when they were 15, and now they are um, eight, 17, 18. So we spend like the the uh, all pandemic time together. Um, and they are the generation of the pandemic, and we don't realize that we, we, they, they spend like the, the most important years of, the, of a teenager where they get formated and they get like mat mature, close into their rooms, <laughs> and, and having access to a, a huge, a huge uh, amount of information coming from everywhere and not, and not in a very critical way. Because they don't, because they don't have like discussion with other people, and this is super important. And this is why I try to make a film. I don't know if I achieve to do it, but I try to make a film with no response, with no answers, but at least uh, trying to ask the good question and trying to taking the time to ask the question properly. So maybe okay, let's stop five minutes, one one hour and thirty minutes, and let's try to ask questions and let's try to understand also the fragilities of other people of other generation, also of masculine, of, of, of males in the film also. Let's try to understand what's happening because otherwise it's going to be like so fast and so crazy that the main, I, I feel like the main question are not properly asked sometimes, especially for the young generation. And I was very shocked sometimes when, when, when they told me 
uh, the young people that they, they dream about a life without internet. Mm. You can imagine, this is crazy. They were 15 and, and when, when I asked them, what do, what, do you, what do you dream about? First of all, was like, what do you think about world, contemporary world? First of all, was, okay, nobody asked me never what I think about anything. This is something that we should think about the adults. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if we can ask for something, it's a world without cell phones, without internet. Wow. Yeah. So let's think as a society what we are doing. <laughs> it's quite heartbreaking. Um, and so just to kind of wrap up on those points, you know, what do you hope people will take away from watching your film? And how do you see, I guess, in a way, the role of cinema to <clears throat> enter into this debate? And perhaps by you know, sitting in the cinema, like you say, for an hour and a half, immersed in a story, actually that can foster empathy Mm -hmm. in a better way than sort mm -hmm. of endless, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. discussion or, yeah, mm -hmm. on Twitter or online and yeah. where things are. Well, I think this is the dream of every filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, 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 I'm, in, from uh, my humble point of view, I hope so. I hope every single film could at least open a debate, at least uh, because it is important. And, and I'm not really, as a filmmaker, but also as an spectator, I'm not like, searching for perfect thing, the perfect storytelling, the perfect light, or, because I don't care, I really don't care for that. But at least that thing that can, I mean, I don't care, I prefer this film is beautiful, but I think it's not, this is not the main point. The main point for me is like, we can like, as a spectator or as a filmmaker, or as a society, like uh, trying to, to put some, some interesting matters on the table for us to discuss and for us to rethink as a society or and, 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 and to dialogue with other people. For me, it's really the most important. So I modestly uh, hope that my film could at least uh, put one or two questions. I think I would be happy with that. <laughs> and then I, w I, I think we, we should not look for perfection, especially when the first movie, like, I, I just try to put all my patience there and, and try, uh, try to, to do things differently and, and, and at least voila, to, 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 to ask some questions. And, and because this, this is what interests me as an spectator too. And, and how do you see yourself um, kind of in the context of mm -hmm. Spanish cinema, let's mm -hmm. say? And I was just thinking, you know, um, watch Carlos Simon's Alpha yeah, yeah, in, uh, yeah, yeah. in Berlin and, you know, kind of part of this wave let's say of like Spanish filmmakers mm -hmm. with this kind of raw style or mm -hmm. um, you know how, how do you see yourself well, I feel very happy <laughs> <laughs> I'm very very good company <laughs> um, first of all because Carla is one of my best friends so uh, we spend a lot of uh, time together and uh, we, we did our films mostly in parallel in the, during the time because we finished our shooting and, and then she started like two two weeks later so I feel very happy and I feel very touched also to for living this moment and I really hope uh, that, that that because it's it's, it's really amazing that the dialogues it's exactly uh, the same answer that I give before I mean our way of doing films is also a way of sharing experiences lives work and I hope this is we are uh, we are achieving kind of results together with a lot of filmmakers in Spain and we are really exchanging script, we're exchanging uh, members of the crew, we're exchanging life and I, and I hope that we can we can put something on this of this exchanging also in our film and in, I feel like it's a very good moment and I'm very happy, I'm yeah. super happy like that finally uh, we can find a diversity of, of regards and perspective in Spanish cinema as well. <laughs> And, but do you feel like there's still progress to be made in terms of female directors being able to bring their stories? Or, you know, this is a sign that the time's yeah, turning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was time. <laughs> it was time for us to make films too, and for us to be doctors too, and for us to be president of governments too. I mean, like, come on. Um, and I hope one day it's, uh, this wouldn't be a matter. Uh, we don't even need to ask in an interview, but for the time while being, we are still needing to to do such a we have a lot to work 
yet to do it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not it's not yet finished. Uh, we are happy, but we need to continue working on it. So. And just finally, what does it mean to you to have your film here in Cannes? And can you quickly tell us what you might work on next, or you don't know yet? Um, well, I'm super happy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that the, the film that we made, did this very little, tiny film that I made with my f friends and family in the south of Spain, is coming to directors for night. So I mean, it's a dream coming true. Yeah. And not just for me, but also for all the member of the crew that were like three days ago with us in the in the theater, and it was beautiful because it's the first time for all of them coming out, and and it was some beautiful moment. So most for them than for me, for me also, but most for them that to feel this uh, moment together, it was beautiful. And then uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hurry about uh, I'm not in a hurry about doing a next project I, 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 I like to make film but I like life too <laughs> so I, I want to live and then and then if I need to tell something I, I will try to do a film but I'm not like in this career mood of doing 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 everything I think capitalism also need to calm down and also to live because if you don't live you don't have stories to tell so I don't want to run next so I don't know. I don't know. I, I really, I, I, I really uh, enjoy a lot watching other people's movies. So I can, I can like continue as a cinephile. Also, don't <laughs> bother me at all. <laughs> well, that's been amazing. Thank you so much for Thank sharing all so that with much. us. And very wise words. We all need to uh, live a bit more. So we've all got stories to tell. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank Cheers. you so much.